Hi everyone, I'm Mary, and today we're looking at Pope Fights, specifically from Overly Sarcastic Productions. This is going to be Italian Wars History Summarized. Now, last time around, it wasn't the Medici family. First time around, it wasn't the Medici family. This time around, you know what? I'm going to have to be right one of these days. I'm going to say it. It's the Medici family this time, because I have literally no reason to believe it is at this point, other than sheer process of elimination, and they may never be covered, but I will keep saying that because it's the only Italian Pope family I know. Link below, original video, hit up. Let's get started. From the religious institution that brought you anti-popes and ignoring the Reformation to make it go oh, away. Oh yeah, the first two videos, yeah. Innovation and pontifical memory. So prepare yourself for Memes. debauchery. Awful diplomatic Here skills the DNA and the rampant soul. clerical misconduct in Pope Fights 3, The Italian Wars. <laughs> you see, it's a simple Whoa. rule of history that if... Ooh, this is three years ago. That is a big style change between the previous video and this one. Before, it was always just him with various poses on the couch, which admittedly, it was fun. I enjoyed it. Now, it looks like Red is definitely drawing a lot more because I can definitely see her style in this. Unless Blue also draws? I don't actually know. I just kind of assumed it was Red doing the art. Given enough time, every institution will get up to some hot nonsense. And <laughs> yeah, sometimes you don't actually need time. Longevity is directly proportional to the absurdity of the shenanigans that ensue. Case in point, the papacy. Easily one of the most significant organizations in human- Wait. He's starting this off by saying they get up to shenanigans with time plus power. If he's setting the stage of, hey, it's going to get crazy after the last two videos. That is uh, setting a very high bar. In history, the Catholic Church has seen its share of hilarious happenings. We've talked elsewhere about some less than pious medieval mishaps, and a you've few. seen how far things can escalate when a German monk gets hammer happy. Reformation but today intensifies. on Pope Fights, we're going to focus in on the fight side of things and take a look at the objectively bonkers chapter in Renaissance history known as the Italian Wars. Ooh. So, to meet some of Rome's most notorious and least saintly popes and see how they navigated through this great Italian sh**s krieg, let's do some history. I'm sorry, did they just... They did the duck These thing. Saintly popes and see how they navigated through this great Italian giant's creep. Is that a? It's a duck with a knife and a pope hat. I know it's actually no, that's a goose. I heard quack. I thought duck. No, that's the goose because it's from Goose Game. The goose with a knife and it's the pope goose. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Someone needs to show this to Dingo. That's Krieg. Let's do some history. She hasn't seen it already for some reason. was a wild time in Italian history. Venice remains the merchant lords of Europe. Florence was busy <laughs> making art that I can't show on YouTube. Yeah, they have issues with actual about, pieces of also art. Also existed, and Rome was well. Rome was the same hot mess it always was, but for new and exciting reasons this time. See, really. <laughs> They put the elevator waiting music in the background when they said Rome was a hot mess. He, do you hear that? Well, Rome was the same hot mess it always was, but for new and exciting reasons this time. See, the popes had just gotten back to their ancestral home yeah. from a 70-year involuntary field trip to We're France. Catching up right story, where the last and they spent the 1400s trying to cover lost ground, catch up on all that renaissance business, and pay more About attention to the not-Rome right? parts of the papal states. Because these popes weren't just clergymen with bigger hats, these guys were kings with a land empire to profit from. Speaking of that cash money, the popes also raked in taxes from every church on your payment plan has two options. Fork it over, burn. Yeah, that's... Yeah, that actually pretty much sums up most of history whenever you try and take anything over. Really just leave this time. kept the profits coming with the threat of a little excommunication to anyone who didn't pay up. Maybe it's something about holding Excommunicated the from life. But the Renaissance papacy was absurdly powerful. But maybe, just slightly possibly maybe, the power went to their heads. And that's little... where our first pope comes in, a Rodrigo Templar Borgia, a cardinal appointed by the previous pope who just so happened to also be his uncle. After... Okay, I do recognize Borgia also because I'm pretty sure they were in... I could be wrong about this. Assassin's Creed? Was the Borgia Pope the one that had trouble with Galileo as well? No, that had to be much... I don't know, and also the name could have just been reused for all I know. I'm pretty sure, though, that Red got into history because of the Borgia Popes from Assassin's Creed. Because I'm sure people in the comments last time around said that, but... It's YouTube comments, they're... Normally, this is where I say it's usually absolute crap because YouTube, but frankly, the comments on my videos have actually been really damn helpful. So there's a very good chance it's real. Neat. 
After three inconclusive votes to pick the new pope in the conclave elections of 1492, pope the fourth progress, round went hold. unanimously to Rodrigo. God just works in mysterious ways. Silver As pope would get- ruled like- Oh my god, they even- <sighs> Did they actually just- And there Rodrigo. we go. God just works- I knew those cards full of silver would come in handy. Yeah, because nothing in Christianity has ever gone bad when you pay someone in silver pieces. Oh, that is right on the Judas. In mysterious ways. As Pope, Borgia ruled like a Roman emperor and didn't worry about silly things Romans like morality even. or celibacy. You know, not having kids that think priests are supposed to do. Nah, Rodrigo had a bunch Ooh, of post. illegitimate children and even made his son Cesare commander of the papal armies and put him in charge of bullying the rest of the papal states into being more obedient subjects. Yeah. But life wasn't all nepotism and a metric Game of Thrones of Vatican orgies because one day responsibility rolled into town in the shape of a French army. So while <laughs> Rodrigo was too busy banging his daughter to pay attention to his surroundings, France and <sighs> You know what? There's a part of me that wants to ask. But then there's the rest of me going, no, just just no, and I, I'm gonna to listen to that part for once. It's a rare occurrence, but I'm gonna to listen to the smarter part of me that says, don't ask. Because if I do, someone in the comments will know. And they won't lie, and they will tell the truth, and it's going to be as bad as you think. And Spain got into a little tiff over control of Naples, and in 1494, oh, Spain, France really? down the peninsula to plop themselves on the Neapolitan throne, to the annoyance of Spain and there the was a Neapolitan horror throne? of Italy. Now, huh. Italian warfare in this day and age... Uh, sorry, I'm just more surprised that people live down there. I may or may not be saying that because my family may or may not be Sicilian and uh, the Irish side of the family has some very, very fun ideas about that being a no man's land of nothing. I don't know why. Yeah, it's Age weird. Been my family's weird. Mercenaries, which is to say a money fight, because for mercenaries, dying was bad business. So they do whatever they could to avoid actually having to go out and fight. They're mercenaries. I'm sorry. So mercenaries at this time explicitly tried not to fight? You know, I just realized I've played so much Metal Gear Rising that the I thought of a mercenary not fighting to me sounds weird. Or because I've seen the news. Business, so they do whatever they a money fight. Because for mercenaries, dying was bad business, so they do whatever they were both they bidding could for the same army, weren't they? Actually, having to go out and fight. They're mercenaries, after all, not soldiers. So in practice, two rival cities would just hire progressively beefier and costlier bands of mercs until one side threw in the towel. Sometimes before anybody even drew a sword. It was basically a competition to see which state could throw more money into a furnace, while some guys were off in the background having fencing practice. Inigo and blue. Oh, probably Inigo Montoya. So it was literally a bluff off. Did anyone ever call the bluff? I mean, probably if they didn't get enough at all, yeah. Because then the mercenaries might actually have a chance of dying, but if they don't, yeah, sure, they'll fight. <laughs> all the money, none of the downside? Nice. This was more or less fine when it was just cities rattling sabers at each other for some farmland here and there, but, but suddenly they had just witnessed the biggest army they'd ever seen bulldozing their way through like it was And no the mercenaries deal. just won't like do that because they will actually need to fight. Claim to their pool noodle fight. So lots of panic later, Borgia helped assemble a league of Italian states and also Spain to kick France out of Naples. Because Spain and France, was a wake-up yeah. call to Italy, but also to France and Spain, as Italy was rolling in a hundred years of Renaissance this is where the fun suddenly begins. looked like very easy pickings. After Borgia died in 1503, the cardinals elected Pope How? Pius III, who planned sweeping reforms to the- Error 404, pontiff not found. What? Oh, he probably died because he said reforms. Papal states and the church in general, and then died of an infection one month later. That's so- Yes, an infection. He had a very bad case of knife to the throat, probably. It's completely unexpected. Bad luck at best, and in this line of work, quite possibly a smiting. The next Pope, Julius- <laughs> I'm sorry, I wasn't expecting a Joe Cat reference, or in this case, because he had the hat on, a Joe Crap reference. Let's see it again. Luck at best, and in this line of work, quite possibly a smiting. Yeah. The next Pope Julius II oh. promised to kick ass and hire Michelangelo to paint the Sistine Chapel. Oh, he's the one who did that. And he's oh. all out of ceiling. See, although our boy Julius is to thank for nearly the entire Vatican tourism circuit between Damn. the Sistine Chapel fresco, the Raphael rooms, the Vatican Museum, and the reconstruction of St. Peter's Basilica.
you know, he's saying a bunch of really cool things. I'm assuming the follow-up is, and then he either wasted money and or did horrible things. Or both. Probably both, actually. He's best known as the Warrior Pope, two words which really ought to be contradictory. But with the looming... Ah, I mean, I played enough Battletech. That's actually a title in that game. I guess Battletech was returning to form then? Ah. Threat of armies coming in from all sides, Julius roused the papal forces against their single greatest danger. Venice? What? Well, Venice was the next biggest state in northern Italy, and they shared a border, so first I was thinking that, while not quite baseless, we'd at least need a microscope to appreciate how short-sighted Julius was being here. But, but then I checked where Julius is from, and it all made Genoa. sense. Genoa. Ya boys from Genoa. So, in due course, Julius assembled a team of France, Spain, and the Holy Roman Empire, Germany, to go beat up his ancestral arch-rival. He got all the people who just invaded and that they were fighting to go after the person who had nothing to do with them? Honestly, maybe he's just really good at diplomacy because that's impressive. Not so much that he got people to fight his enemy, but that he got enemies to fight together against someone who hadn't fucked around with them yet, unless Venice was fucking around with them. It was rich and they probably wanted money, never mind. This League of Cambrai succeeded in ganking the entire Venetian terra firma in no time flat, but Julius had ignored the golden rule. That's what you get for monopolizing Eastern Mediterranean terrain routes. Oh yeah, because the Silk Road was existing for quite a long time. I'm pretty sure it's actually even before this, and there was variations of what became the Silk Road existed well before this, actually. I'm not sure when they started or when the first precursors were, because as far as I know, they've actually discovered that there were what would later become trade routes from the East in, well, I was going to say biblical times, but that's not very helpful. Uh, BC times. ...of slow and steady gets the spaghetti. So when he looked at the map for two more seconds, he realized that France held half of the Po Valley, so he decided that now these Frenchmen were too dangerous to stay in Italy. And he Mayhaps formed an you screwed yourself over them with Venice. Soon enough, Spain what? and the HR... Seriously, dude? I have to be hearing this wrong and then reading the sign wrong. And he formed an alliance to defeat them with Venice. Soon enough, Spain and the HRE joined in on the fun to kick France out of town. This had the- See everyone else jumping in on France? That makes sense. They're the regional powers, so I guess at this point, the superpowers of the area. I was gonna say area and era at the same time, but you know, both are accurate. And it makes sense they want to jump on and gank the person who literally is threatening both of them, but neither one would threaten themselves. So yeah, it makes sense. Still weird that first alliance of all three of them versus Venice. Because then they weren't fighting each other. Now, I mean, now they are fighting each other. That makes a lot more sense to me. The obvious outcome that the Empire suddenly had free reign in northern Italy because they had nominally owned the place for the last 500 years, but they'd only just now remembered that the other side of the Alps exists. Julius and the Seriously? Emperor tried to strong-arm Venice out of the land partition, so Venice completed the trifecta of cursed alliances by teaming up with France against the Pope. The end result of this terrible teamwork roller coaster was rewinding the map back to before the war even happened, which makes the War of the League of Cambrai, Italy's biggest ever game of Deck the Leader, literally all for nothing. And before you go feeling bad for Julius. One, this whole thing was his fault, and two, he was already dead. Yeah, old what? Julius went up to file his heavenly vacation request right before France and Natural <laughs> to save one. Oh my god. They Venice just gave the Germans the boot. Bad. The new Pope Leo X was a Medici and a son of Florence's Call diet it! King Lorenzo the Mag Just gonna throw it out there, but somebody pick up that phone because I called it. It's a single mention of the name, but I'm gonna take it, damn it. Magnificent at that. He had the unfortunate luck of walking into the financial chasm left behind. Dio mio, Julian, how much money did you blow just to lose Venice and then gain it and then lose it again? Uh, I'm assuming the answer is yes. By all those wars, and this was made even worse by Leo's habitual bank breaking purchases, including and not limited to palaces, parties, the reinstallation of the Medici family as rulers of Florence, and an elephant parade in which. Elephant parade? Oh yeah, because expensive enough to show that they have the money to import from across what would that time be the major gulf, or I guess sea, the Mediterranean. Yeah. And establish the Medici. Of course, it, I just even... 
<sighs> Leo rode around Rome on an elephant gifted by Portugal. Problem is, when he got to gifted, my to ass. the Tiber River, the elephant got spooked and bucked poor Leo right into the drink. But the Pope didn't seem to mind, and later had his darling elephant buried with full honors in the Vatican courtyard. What were we talking about Seriously? again? Oh yeah, <laughs> wasteful spending and mind-numbing debt. Let's get back to it. Leo's financial strategy included all the usual tricks of selling church offices and a fast pass through purgatory, but even this constant moral depravity couldn't balance Leo's budget. And needless to say, some of the bigwigs who Wait, so he was so bad at managing money, sin didn't pay anymore. When corruption isn't covering the bills and you might actually need to go straight to cover it, that is a horrible level of incompetence. Or you're basically what the uh, House Lannister is based on. Bought their way into the papal bureaucracy were less than admired by their Roman subjects, and you often think. found themselves the topic of rude graffiti around town, joking that the only insult worse than getting accused of promiscuity, murder, and corruption was being called a cardinal. But aside from- <laughs> Oh, wow. Sorry, I just- I enjoy old-fashioned insults when you have the context for why they're insulting. That just- that's just fun, man. From precipitating the Protestant Reformation and pretending that ignoring it would make it stop, Leo's only other major blunder was in getting dope smacked by France and Venice. To me, the most concerning thing about Leo X is that the disaster popes around him almost make his reign look passable. But while we're here, let's take a second to- You know, as much as I'm joking about this guy, the fact that he just pointed out that he's a good pope by comparison, he's just an idiot who's bad at money as opposed to everyone else, who is actively bad at surviving and or having money and then wasted it in ways that were so much worse than just mismanagement. It was actively burning it. I'm sure one of them actually had fires in Rome a few times, so that might have been a literal thing. Certainly probably had coinage here. Very hot fire. Or low. I don't actually know what the gold melting point is appreciate on a pure geopolitical level the nonsense of the renaissance papacy it's a spiritual office with complete political power over central italy and an arsenal of diplomatic weapons that include such tricks as excommunication but also it's a position that can be filled by basically anybody from any state so the entire Optimized for ease of diplomatic hijacking by non-Roman entities. End result, consistently a geopolitical wildcard. Because if you have one asshole in there, the next one could be literally from anywhere. And that also probably gave them a good bit of political will because anyone who would try and take them over might instead not do that because they could just buy off whoever wins and or kill off anyone and then just pay off whoever's left. Because then they could put their, uh, I was going to say pawn, but puppet is probably more accurate. A pawn, you just move a few times. A puppet can be very powerful, but ultimately just, well, yours. I'm probably going to hear much more of that. I'm actually a little surprised we haven't heard more of it yet, actually. Higher political trajectory of the Vatican would flip overnight whenever they got a new pope, oscillating between Borgia's rampant Spain favoritism to Julius's hometown rivalry to Leo's Florentine dynastic ambitions. Each Which of these guys just probably succeed long term. More. Another arm of their native state. In diplomatic mm -hmm. terms, the papacy was a chaos fountain. <laughs> now, this is all well That's funny way to say none. enough, but the European political balance got bent way out of shape in 1519 when Spain and the Holy Roman Empire suddenly became ruled by the same guy right. and Emperor Charles. Charles found himself the most powerful man in Europe by a metric oh. Habsburg jawline. This is the mondo yikes that Pope Clement VII found himself dealing with, effectively Another boxed Medici. in by the empire to the north and Spain to the south with no allies but France, Venice, and Clement's native Florence. This matchup looks imbalanced because it is imbalanced, so Clement's league immediately met the underside of the imperial Spanish steamroller. Charles' armies confiscated Milan from France and stomped on any city vain enough to think it deserved existing privileges. But one problem with these giant roving murder parties is that they're dummy expensive to staff and equip, so most armies were simply expected to collect their payment by way of plunder. And with and that made them a huge threat, so if you fight them, you have to fight them. As opposed to the previous ones where they talked about the militias who just, well, waited for someone to outbid them. Most of Italy oh, that's already wiped, prior. only the biggest capitals could still cover the bill, and Charles was aware of this. So when his Spanish and fiercely Protestant German troops marched into papal territories in 1527, they mutinied and accidentally booked it 200 miles south to besiege Rome. Now, while it might be easy to get carried away and, say, eat an entire sleeve of Oreos, not that I have any personal experience with that. 
I too have never done that because it is completely unheard of. <laughs> I mean, why, why would you? Why would you ever bring up something so impossible, Blue? <laughs> yeah. Also, I love how he's setting the stage for them basically sacking Rome because it's the only place that had enough money because the other popes had fucked all the money away at this point and then got it back and then got rid of it, then got it back. And you, you get the drill at this point. That there's no whoopsies in bapping Rome and stealing the shinies. And sure, the severity of the sacking left a stain on Charlie's reputation, but what did he expect? Oh no, my army fought. How unforeseen. That feeling, ah, uh, your army fights. How dare they do the thing that I pay them to do by not paying them. Honestly, this is probably one of the reasons there's then leaders to pose because the army's like, hmm, we just got money by sacking this place. You didn't pay us, but we're fighting for you. What if we sack you? I mean, we all know that happens. Give me a break. Now, with the Pope as his vassal and Italy brought to heel, the only player left was France. They duked it out over the next few decades, and France pulled the objectively bonkers move of inviting the Ottomans to help. Guys, please, you're making this too easy. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised this is the first time they've really been brought up to. Fight Charles, but eventually Italy was too busted to be worth fighting. Well, this was fun, but it's time to pillage the Americas. Really? The Americas at this point? I actually don't know when that started, now that I think about it. ...over anymore, and overseas colonization became the new hotness. Back to our old pal Clement, while most would consider his reign a disaster. At least on a scale of piety and priestliness, Clements has the others beaten by landslides. Yeah, because he had the absolute least amount of power, so he fucked around less than everyone else because he couldn't. <laughs> he did accomplish his personal goal of restoring Medici rule to Florence by installing them as dukes. So, yep. hey, one point for Clement. The Renaissance papacy is a... And that's the second pope that absolutely tried to push it. Unless that was actually the one we saw earlier. I just forgot the name already because that's entirely possible. I don't think it's not. Yeah, Medici's pushing the Medici's... Odd question. Are there any Medici family descendants alive right now? You know, I wouldn't think that, but then again, every now you hear about these famous rich families that are definitely dead, and then it's like, oh no, they're not. Like the Rockefellers aren't actually dead. The most famous one is Anderson Cooper. Yeah, that's a thing. A wild ride. Between the dissonance of popes who fight wars and church-sanctioned depravity, it can be easier to imagine this time in the Papal States as a mini-Roman Empire, with the added wrinkle of way more players and, and actually popes Rome. with varying loyalty. And that's what makes this period so wonky. These popes bent Rome to their individual wills at the expense of the Papal States itself. And sometimes and got so exactly the what they the want, round, at the cost of everything else. For Papacy? Zero. Yeah. Okay, one small correction. I said Rockefeller. That's wrong. It's actually Vanderbilt. That said, yeah. So I'm just kind of wondering if there's any offshoots of Medici. They're just kind of floating around there right now. And just like randomly someone you know just happens to be part of that family. I don't know, but it'd be kind of fun to find out. In the depressing, oh, hey, look at that. They're still technically in charge of cities. Way that you're definitely not going to find out that happened. Yeah. More importantly, this is cool because one, I feel like I got to be right about the Medici's being in there. Two, every Pope there got to do what they personally wanted. And all it cost them was everything they were in charge of. And they weren't even the most fucked up ones. That's the worst part. It's like Blue said, some of them, by comparison, looked really damn good because everyone else just was horrible. And we're not going to talk about that first one who was um, experimenting with having their family tree become a spoon and circle back. Yeah, I, I'm trying not to think about it, but the more I try not to, the more it, it just, no. But it, it's in there, but I don't want it to be. Ugh. Yeah. So you guys know the deal. There's a link below to the original video. Hit it up. Are we done? Leave a like, comment, subscribe, and if there's anything I missed, let me know. Because I just love hearing more about this kind of stuff. It's fun. I'll see you guys in the next one. Adios.